July 22nd, St. Mary Magdalene. The story of St. Mary Magdalene, as generally received in the West, following St. Gregory the Great, is one of the most moving and encouraging in Holy Scripture. Mention is made in the Gospels of a woman who was a sinner, of Mary Magdalene, a follower of our Lord, and of Mary of Bethany, the sister of Lazarus. And the liturgy of the Roman Church identifies these three as a single individual. Mary Magdalene probably received her name from Magdala, a place on the western shore of the Sea of Galilee, and our Lord first met her on his Galilean ministry. St. Luke records that she was a sinner, and evidently a notorious sinner, though he says nothing to suggest that she was a public harlot, as is commonly supposed, and goes on to describe how, Christ having accepted an invitation to dine with a Pharisee, she came into the house while they were at the table, fell weeping before Jesus, and, having wiped his feet with her own hair, anointed them with ointment from an alabaster box. The Pharisee murmured, and Jesus, knowing his thoughts, rebuked him, first by asking which of two released debtors, a great and a small, had more cause to be grateful to their creditor. Then more directly he asked, Dost thou see this woman? I entered into thy house, thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she with tears hath washed my feet, and with her hairs hath wiped them. Thou gavest me no kiss, but she hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but she with ointment hath anointed my feet. Wherefore I say to thee, many sins are forgiven her, because she hath loved much. But to whom less is forgiven, he loveth less. And to the penitent woman he said, thy sins are forgiven, thy faith hath made thee safe. Go in peace. In his very next chapter, St. Luke, in speaking of the missionary travels of our Lord in Galilee, tells us that he and his disciples were accompanied and ministered to by certain women, among them Mary Magdalene out of whom seven devils had gone forth. Later he entered into a certain town and was received by Martha and her sister Mary, who had come to live with their brother Lazarus at Bethany in order to be near the master, who at their insistence had restored him to life. Martha, busy about the house, appealed to him to urge Mary to help her, rather than to sit continually at his feet listening to his words, and she received that answer which has puzzled and consoled all succeeding ages. Martha, Martha, thou art careful, and thou art troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary hath chosen in the best part, which shall not be taken away from her. Mary the sinner had become Mary the contemplative. On the day before the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which was a prelude to his passion, Jesus supped with the family of Lazarus at Bethany. Jesus loved them, St. John tells us, and on this occasion Mary again anointed his head and feet and wiped them with her hair, so that the whole house was filled with the fragrance of the ointment. And again there was a critic present, this time Judas, the apostle, scandalized not because he was self-righteous, but because he was dishonest, a traitor, and had an unhealthy attachment to worldly things. Again, Jesus vindicated Magdalene. Let her alone. Why do you molest her? She hath wrought a good work upon me. For the poor you have always with you, and whensoever you will, you may do them good. But me you have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, that also which she hath done shall be told for a memorial of her. And behold, says St. John Chrysostom, what he said has come to pass. Wherever you go, you will hear her praises sung. The dwellers in Persia, in India, in the British Isles celebrate this deed. Yet Mary Magdalene is remembered at least as well for other things. In the darkest hour of our Lord's life, she stood at some distance, watching him on the cross. And with the other Mary, she saw the great stone rolled before the door of the tomb wherein lay the body of our Lord. But the crowning mercy of the life of Mary Magdalene was yet to come, for it was she who, bearing sweet 
sweet spices and weeping by the sepulchre early on the first day of the week was first to see to be greeted by and to recognize the risen christ she the contemplative was the first witness to that resurrection without which our faith is in vain it was to the abused flesh of the penitent that the radiant and glorified body of the son of god was first made manifest jesus said to her mary she turning to him said master jesus saith to her do not touch me for i am not yet ascended to my father but go to my brethren and say to them i ascend to my father and to your father to my god and to your god according to eastern traditions mary magdalene after pentecost accompanied our lady and st john to ephesus where she died and was buried the english pilgrim st willibald was shown her shrine there in the middle of the eighth century but according to tradition in france in the roman martyrology and by the granting of various local feasts she with lazarus martha and others evangelized province the last thirty years of her life it is claimed she spent in a cavern of rock high upon the mountains in the maritime alps in contemplation and was then transported miraculously just before she died to the chapel of st maximin she received the last sacraments and was buried by that saint compunction of heart says st bernard is a treasure infinitely to be desired and an unspeakable gladness to the heart it is healing to the soul it is remission of sins it brings back again the holy ghost into the humble and loving heart